I am nearly through the desert and so I thought what I would do is give you another gear video. In this video I'm going to tell you what I'm carrying, how I carried it through the desert, um, what gear has changed, what is about to change as I enter into the mountains. Uh, and at the very end of the video, some of you have been very observant and want to know what this is all about. It's not what you think or it probably is or some of you have an idea but I'll give you a rundown on that at the end. So, firstly, when I was approaching the desert it became very obvious that I was going to need to carry a lot more water uh, and I had a dog as well so I suddenly went from just carrying things that I needed to a heap more. Um, and so I started looking into uh, al alternative forms of hiking and it became really obvious that I was going to need a cart. And so I started researching and writing to different companies and the company that I was really hoping to get on board with me was the Mono Walker. And it just happened that at the time I was approaching Santiago when I made the last gear video, um, they had two people with two carts heading down through the Atacama Desert towards Santiago. I wasn't there at the time. It happened that a lot of people got involved to help me get the cart. Um, a family went and picked it up from the airport and then held it for me for ages until I arrived in Santiago. Um, and then from there I was able to trial it from Santiago up to the start of the desert, make any changes or really I just had to get co comfortable with it because once I enter the desert it would be too late to fix anything. So I got to give it a good trial and then I got a puppy and <laughs> well the, the logistics got more and more complicated but it was a bit of a lifesaver. So um, to explain the cart Basically, it has one wheel, two handles, and I have a harness that I use to carry the cart. Um, it connects in two points, one over the hips and another point over here across your chest. And that gives you a really comfortable connection the entire time that you're walking. Um, then here you connect to the handles. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do that requires a little bit of a squat but once it's on it sits really nicely all day. Um, at first um, it took a little bit of getting used to and I had to change my posture a little bit um, but from there it was brilliant because I stopped getting foot pain and um, I was able to walk really big days when I had to. So I hope you can see this. Um, essentially you pick it up it's not balanced right now which is a problem when you're walking. Um, if you don't have a balance but you quickly learn how to pack it properly. I haven't because I don't have water and food in there right now so it feels a bit different. <laughs> You're not going anywhere, it's alright, chill. So um, from here you can walk fairly easily. Um, <laughs> Wombat loves it when we start walking. He does it every time and I'm trying to teach him not to, but obviously I'm not doing a good job. Anyway, so I'll put it back. So there are two panniers over the wheel and you put anything that's heavy right at the back there uh, and the wheel takes off all the weight from you uh, unless you're going uphill and then it gets a bit slow. Um, and the main bag is connected by three belts. There is a brake at the front, two connection points for the harness. Um, and I'm gonna go through step by step what I've been carrying to get me through the desert. So, these are the belts that come undone really easily. Uh, and I've had this since the very beginning. Um, this has been really good to use as a second insulator, it's very effective in the cold um, to go underneath an air mat and to prevent spikes. Um, it's also good when I'm having a break. Wombat really likes to sleep on it. Actually, he's getting on it right now. <laughs> um, and I would highly recommend having some sort of foam if you're walking in cold climates to go underneath your mat. So first I have a mat. Then. This is an insulated mat by Cedar Summit. It's an ethylite. It is specifically designed for women. Um, and you, you can use the bag to blow up the mat, which I particularly like because um, in my first year I was using a different mat. I had to blow air in myself, which I got used to, but it was quite an effort. 
Um, but what happened over winter is that the warmth of my blowing into the mat then caused a whole bunch of mold. So this was the replacement and it has been fantastic. It's coupled with a um, pillow and they have a lock system. So you can actually uh, put like Velcro, but it's a modern form of Velcro onto both the mat and the pillow and then it locks the pillow into place at night so you don't lose your pillow, which is pretty delightful. And then this is my sleeping bag, which is way smaller than any other sleeping bag that I've had. It's also female specific. It's a flame women's Cedar Summit sleeping bag. It has a comfort rating of two degrees. Because I'm going into the mountains where it's already four degrees and it's just the beginning of winter. With this, this is a um, merino liner. It adds about four degrees, I think, of warmth. I'm already using it. The bag is a mummy style bag. So what that means is you can't get airflow coming through from your feet and it keeps you extra warm when you are in cold climates. Um, what, so what I do now is I pop the bag, I pop the liner over my body or I jump into it. It's like a sleeping bag itself. Um, and then I leave my feet out of the sleeping bag and I open the bag up and wear it over my torso. And that keeps me warm in the desert where it's getting to about two degrees at night and that keeps me really comfortable if i do get cold i can pop my feet into the sleeping bag i haven't had to do the sleeping bag up yet so i feel like this combination is going to work really nice for me once i'm up higher in the mountains um, inside the front bag is where all of my um, equipment is that i don't need until the afternoon and then in these panniers i keep water food and anything that I need for sun protection or um, through the day typically. So uh, I'm going to show you everything. It's going to be a bit of cutting and chopping and changing but that's cool. So first of all I have a hat, um, sunglasses, sunscreen and gloves and I use those every single day. Um, protect myself against sunburn. This is my food bag. I have a trail, a, a tra trowel, a tra trowel, trowel, trowel. I have a trowel, um, a food bag, and in my food bag I have gas and food, which I won't go through today. Um, I continue to carry this, which is something I want on hand quickly if um, if something breaks. It has things that are really useful. So it has super glue, which I've just recently used to fix my shoes. Uh, it has a knife, multi-tool. I have tape and I have nail cutters, which I use all the time to prevent myself from getting blisters and losing toenails and then it also has needle and a thread that's it um, and those things I keep on hand because I tend to need them while I'm walking and I don't want to unpack everything to get to them this is my camping stove I changed this from last time when I walked through the desert to save on weight I started eating food that was pre-prepared and then I decided that if I wasn't able to buy petrol I'd just eat pre-prepared pre food um, and deal with not having the luxury of hot food. I may regret that but for the moment I've been able to get gas a little bit later I may not be able to but we'll just see what happens. Um, it's run on a, mo on a Soto stove so this connects to um, the gas and um, because this type of stove how do I explain this so not all stoves have a slow release valve a piston inside where you let the gas come on and what that means is things like a jet boiler it's really hard to achieve a simmer um, and you either it almost feels like you either have lukewarm water or boiling water so um, if you're looking for a stove that lets you have more flexibility in cooking you probably want to look into a soto um, and that sits right inside my cup 
and this is a Cedar Summit setup. So this is a Cedar Summit really lightweight pot and I just have one pot. It does me fine. Sometimes I wish I had others but I can um, cook a sauce, put it in my cup and then cook rice or whatever in the pot and then add the sauce at the end and it heats up and works efficiently. Um, what I've done to a, for an adaption is I've made a tea cozy which you can make out of um, an insulated material that you can buy from a hardware shop and use sticky tape that's also uh, for insulated. It's um, I don't know what it's called it's like an aluminium tape but I can link you to I will link you to a video on how to make these I made mine a little bit differently um, works really well and it means that instead of water cooling down in five minutes I can actually boil the water put the tea cozy on and then leave it whatever is in there to cook over 20 minutes and save a heap of gas uh, it also means that if I use most of the water I can leave a little bit of water at the bottom for cleaning later or for a cup of tea or whatever it's been really good I'm glad I've done it and I will make another one later in the year because um, I put I put the tea cozy on too soon one day and it shrunk a little bit the bottom one shrunk just a little bit and this blistered because all the steam came out and changed the shape so it doesn't fit as nicely as it used to so if you make one keep that in mind just let the water cool down a little bit before you put it on on the food side of my of the food <laughs> in the food pannier I keep my beacon which is for tracking it's what you look at when you see where I am uh, it's also what I use if I have an emergency um, in my pocket I keep a um, gas spray for mostly I have it in case that I get attacked by a dog um, it's not really I've never felt that threatened by people but of course if I am worried I can pull it out and use it uh, strategically um, and on that I also have a wallet full of dead bank cards and a little bit of money so that if someone does try to take my wallet I can give them a fake wallet. This bag is solely um, for the cart. In it has I have some tape uh, and what I need to change the tire, replace the tube and then straps in case I have a problem with the cart. I actually haven't had to use this at all. Hopefully I continue to have no problems with the cart. Um, and I have been quite amazed. The wheel is made with Kevlar, so it is meant to be really resistant against things like spikes, um, which I come across quite a bit because most of the trees in the desert, when there are trees, um, have some form of prickle that gets stuck in your shoes easily you know every day I pull out these um, needles when I'm in an area like an, like an oasis where I am right now there's also two things that I'm carrying with the cart which I haven't before um, but I'm really glad I have one is a lock system so that if I need to leave my cart somewhere while I either go through a border and can't keep an eye on my things um, or I want to go to the shops but again can't keep an eye on everything I use this and I still tie Wombat to the cart but while he's young he's not quite as protective as he could be so people aren't terribly worried about approaching the cart um, again I haven't had a problem and I've only used it at a border crossing I haven't felt the need to use it yet at a supermarket because I usually go to um, small shops where it's just me um, the other thing that I have is a diary and some pens. Uh, I've been using this for to-do list and also to write stories about what's been happening so I can remember more of what I've been doing and not forget the stories that I should be telling you guys. With my clothes, this season I've had to carry a lot because while I am walking in the desert, I'm about to cross um, inland up into the mountains where it's already four degrees and it's only the start of winter. So I am going to need a warmer system and when I was in Patagonia I didn't have enough clothes so I kept my warm clothes for the night time when I was in my tent and then I really froze and just had to keep walking all day to get through the really cold climate. So this year I have um, two sets of clothes, one for walking, one for um, being in my tent uh, and then everything else is just what I've been using while I've been in the desert. <laughs> um, what I would recommend 
if you are going to go traveling or hiking uh, is to have a shirt like this one that has two zip pockets down the front. This has been really good because I can keep my mobile phone on one side and the pepper spray on the other uh, and my headphones. Uh, it also means that when I do get to town I don't have to remember where that is, where my phone is because that's something that has been stolen in the past and in these regions are popular for thefts. So highly recommend if you're going to go traveling, especially your first layer, to try and find something with zips like this. This is a Kau, I think that's how you say it, t-shirt, hiking shirt. Um, and I really, really like it, especially because if I put a jumper or a rain jacket over the top, it's even harder to get to access to the pockets. So I have this shirt and a pair of leggings for walking. And then I have this jacket, which I start by walking um, in the mornings. I usually have taken it off within the first hour and then when I have a break I put it back on again. This is for the mountains. I imagine I'll be wearing this all day when it's cold um, and I'll wear it under that first jacket. It's a fleece um, jumper and it's just one that I got on sale when I was in Santiago. I have socks for sleeping in that are really warm, they're quite heavy, um, but essential for sleeping at night. I have my first layer, so in the mountains I imagine that I won't really want to wear this shirt as much or it won't be as effective, so I'll wear this first. This shirt if I still want the pockets, and then um, if not there is another zipper pocket in that fleece jumper in the same position. I have a, it hasn't rained much obviously, at all in the desert and I'll be in the mountains during the dry season so I have really lightweight jackets. I worry that because they're so lightweight that they may not be as durable but again I won't be using them so much and I'll be able to test and let you know how they work. These are the Helium Outdoor Research rain jackets and I have the rain pant as well. Uh, and then I have a pair of tights which I imagine I might may well use while I'm walking. They're fleece lined um, to keep me a little bit warmer during the day. I do know that when I was in Patagonia I had similar type of pants which were way better than the nylon type that I'm wearing right now and then I would use the rain pants if the wind chill factor was too, too much which it often was. And I have these socks for wearing their high, for wearing in the mountains as well. Um, but for now, I wear the combination of armor skin socks. They made these especially for me. They put my logo on them. Um, they are anti-blister socks, which you roll onto your feet. Stop. They act as a second skin so that they reduce friction and stop you from getting blisters. The problem with my feet is that they're quite broad so what I did is I cut the toes out because otherwise these were too tight and they were squeezing my feet together causing blisters in between my toes. Originally I got around that by um, putting a gel in between my toes which was really effective but then um, one of the socks, I got um, water retention in one of my legs so I cut one of the socks at the top, this is a previous pair, um, to help alleviate that water retention. And I, what I found was that, this, the, that despite having a big cut in it, it didn't continue, the cut didn't grow. So I felt that if I cut a hole in the toe and used it more as a sleeve, that that would work more effectively. And I've told the company, they're really open to feedback. I thought they'd be really upset because they made these especially for me and then I went ahead and destroyed them more or less but they're still holding up I'm still using them um, and what, what happens when you're walking for a long time your feet tend to just get really tough and you don't need to use anything so I continue to hold on to them anyway for the first couple of weeks if I have an extended break these are darn tough socks they have a lifetime warranty never to have a hole so if you do get a hole in these socks the brand will replace them no questions asked um, I have seen a bit of wear on them actually, but you'd expect that after two years of wearing the same pair of socks every single day. Um, nonetheless, I'll see how they feel about their no questions asked policy once those holes do come through. 
This is one more piece of clothing that I have. It's a full length jacket. I think it has a down rating of 600. It's from the North Face. Um, and I will use that when I'm in my tent this year and in town to keep extra warm. The only thing that I haven't mentioned um, is that I'm also still in the Hocker 1-1 shoes, which I really like. They've been fantastic to alleviate foot pain. So if you're looking to try a new shoe, I'd really recommend these, especially if you have broad feet. They've been good for me. And they make two versions. They make one for regular feet and wider feet. I don't know which ones I'm using, but um, I will say that I have walked about 700, no. Yeah, I've walked about 700 kilometers in these shoes. And the first pair I got a thousand kilometers out of and now these have a big um, tear along the fabric where it connects so I can't use them anymore. Well I have to until I get my new pair of shoes. So I'm using tape to hold the shoe down and then I've put um, glue which was really risky because you can cause a hot spot on your foot so that causes a lot of pain. Um, but I was really careful and I put the glue just where the tear was possibly going to continue and I really really hope that that works and that it doesn't split any further because at the moment this shoe has a split from here to here so the new pair are on their way hopefully I get them um, and I don't have to walk in my camp shoes which are schwamis they're really comfortable super light um, and they're nice to have in town so that I don't have to throw on the shoes that I'm wearing every single day my first aid kit has shrunk considerably. I went through and had a look at the medications that I have not used, removed a whole bunch, then got sick and wish I hadn't removed certain things such as diarrhea pills. Um, and uh, it's a lot lighter and has things like band-aids, painkillers, a hydration drink in case I become severely dehydrated and i also have a first aid kit in there for wombat which includes antibiotics and painkillers in case he becomes injured himself and i need to buy myself some time to get him to a vet now when i mentioned earlier that having a cart means that you can have a few extra items this is certainly the case when it comes to my shelters so i'm still carrying um, the north face triarch tent it's really roomy it's been really really like, fantastic for me but um, it is heavy, so when I swap back into a hike, uh, backpack, I'll definitely be changing this system to something that's lighter. Um, and I also carry a bivy bag. This is something that I can make quickly to have shade, or if I can't be bothered setting up my tent one night and wanna pack up fast in the morning, I use this. I also use it when we have a rest early in the morning and there's a bit of mist around. I put the foam mat down, use my sleeping bag to keep warm and then throw this over the top so that the moisture doesn't settle on my sleeping bag. And these are my electronics. So, <laughs> this has been a two kilogram disaster. It's my DJI drone, which the first one arrived and the compass was broken. It never, um, the compass never calibrated and I had to send it back to Australia. I sent it to a friend of mine who's been really busy renovating the house and has a family to look after. So he wasn't able to get it back in time for the warranty, um, but hopefully they're gonna come good on their product with luck because then another friend sent me theirs that they didn't have any problems with. I flew it three times and it overheated and now the fan doesn't work. Um, I didn't do anything particularly crazy with it. I just flew it like you do. Um, and then it says that the processing chip was overheated, but also the fan wouldn't come on. So I can actually send this in for repair, but it really makes me wonder if it's worth the wait. Probably not. Even though I really wish I had have been able to use it to get some photos, especially in the desert. I guess I feel a little bit irritated with the product because I carried the first one a thousand kilometers and it never worked so you know it's really frustrating when you have something that's so heavy that you have to hold on to and you can't just get rid of easily and then this one I have also carried a thousand kilometers and it's only worked five times less three times so it's just really frustrating and when you're on your own and you're really doing the hard yards it's just so disappointing so i'm really hoping that the company 
help me out. We'll see. Um, and then finally, I think uh, what you might want to know about is stuff that I carry for Wombat and how Wombat's helping me and pulling his own weight. Well, at the moment he's not because it's the desert and it's too hot for him to carry a backpack. But the distributors of Roughwear were really generous and they sent me a backpack that he can use. So it connects onto this harness and this sits over the top and you can load it up with lots of good things. I think what I'll use it for is his water and food for a day and then it'll get lighter through the day as he consumes both of those things uh, and he gets a rest like I do. Um, at the moment though, because it's the desert, he did overheat in the harness. So now when I pull this out, he sees it and he runs away quite quickly because he doesn't want to have to wear it. Um, it's not so much that he overheated, it's just he was hot in the desert and then I put my hand underneath to check how he was going and it felt a bit warm and I thought, knowing that he doesn't like being hot, that this was something that would be bugging him. Um, so as we go into the mountains, I'll start introducing him to it again and get him used to the weight slowly. And then for the cold weather, once we get into the mountains, I have a self-inflating seat that he can use as a mat and does use. He actually, he really likes it, um, but I don't always blow it up because it's hot here and usually we're on sand and it's comfortable for him to sleep on that. And I have his blanket that I've had from the very beginning. And I have an old jacket that I used to wear that I will slip on him if we get into really cold weather and I don't have time to get more rough wear products for the climate. And finally the other piece of equipment that I do have is this tripod. It weighs under 500 grams. It's a Momax tripod and it has been really really good for helping me take photos that you see on my Instagram page. So here is all my stuff. It's not as much as you might have expected. This video has been proudly brought to you by Wasi Punko. Not really, I've just always wanted to say that. <laughs> but it is dedicated to them because I've stayed here about a week longer than I'd planned to without charge. Um, and that's because Wombat has a minor leg injury so I've just been waiting to make sure that it's completely healed before we continue so that we don't have a problem further down the line and I certainly don't want to give him a permanent injury because I'm pushing him forward so we're just having a bit of an extended rest. Um, this place is amazing. I'm in Nazca. This is in a part of a little oasis and is owned by an artist. Her name is Olivia. She paints watercolored botany and is so well known that her paintings have been put onto Peruvian stamps which I think is really cool so if you happen to be in the area and you'd like to pay it forward and say thank you to her for me <laughs> come and stay here it's really nice especially if you want to be out of the hustle bustle of the city and need to just be able to let your guard down come here so what's the deal um well, I've been wearing one of these on and off since I've started my journey and it's really quite obvious, um, for me anyway. Every so often I get asked personal questions, especially when I'm alone with another man and um, I find it way easier if I can just tell them that I'm married and my husband is in the next town buying food and will be back shortly. Interestingly, the reaction is usually, oh yes, of course they are, and then they leave me alone. But if I tell them that I'm on my own and that I'm single, which is always the next question, I tend to get harassed more times than I don't. So I just find that it's way easier to pop this on and lie. Um, and then incidentally, if a woman asks me and we're on our own, <laughs> I tell her the whole story and they usually give me a knowing, appreciative Yes, that's a good idea. So that is the deal with that. I am not suddenly married. I haven't had a wild romance while I'm over here walking. Um, <laughs> it's just a strategy that I use and it works well for me. So if you are a single female and you are going to be traveling, I would highly recommend that you get a cheap ring, um, one that doesn't mark your skin so you can use it the whole time, which is what I now have uh, because it really has helped me out. Thanks for watching.